Okay, this experiment needs kitchen paper, cotton wool, two small jars, some water, and of course, some seeds. So what's the experiment, guys? We're, We're going, going to, to investigate, investigate how seeds grow. Danny is rolling up some kitchen paper and putting it into one of the jars. And now Ben is filling the jar with... <gasps> teeny tiny clouds! No, Zoom, that's cotton wool. I'm going to put my seed in. Danny's planting a corn seed. Next, he sprays some water onto the cotton wool, which will soak it up until the seed needs it. Because seeds love water? That's right, Zoom. Seeds like these need three things to grow. Water, oxygen, and the right temperature. Now Ben's turn. He's got a sunflower seed. Very good. Now they have to give those seeds time to do some growing. Uh, how much time? About a week. Oh, that's ages. Patience, Zoom. Growing takes time. Look, what's happening? The seeds are sprouting, Zoom. The roots are growing down in search of food and water, and the stems are growing up towards the light. Wow, that's amazing. Time for Ben and Danny to check on their seeds. Have you seen the sunflower seed? It's even growing a leaf at the top. I can't believe that with just some light, heat and water, those tiny seeds could sprout. And now you know how a seed turns into a plant. Thanks, Ben and Danny. Your seeds have really grown on me. <laughs> Bye, Zoom. Let's find out. To show us how food miles work, Stephen and Ryan are going to need their dinner. And then what are you going to do, guys? We're going to find out whose dinner traveled further. They've got chicken goujons, mashed potato, and fruit for dessert. So they're eating the same dinner. Not quite soon. The things on Ryan and Stephen's plates come from different places. What kind of places? To show us, they've made a special map of the world. Whoa, that is one big map. And the boys are standing on Ireland. Stephen is going to show us how far his dinner had to travel. His chicken gouchons were from China. That's a long way to travel. Yes, and it's taking a lot of energy. So that means a lot of food, Miles. Uh, keep winding, Stephen. Now his pineapple, which came from Central America. Not as far, but still a long way away. And finally, his potatoes, which came from Europe. <laughs> you must be tired after using up all that energy, Stephen. Now it's Ryan's turn. Hey, it's all at Ryan's feet. That's because all the ingredients in his dinner were grown in Ireland. So they had a small distance to travel and use less energy. Oh, and that means fewer food miles. Exactly, Zoom. And fewer food miles is much better for us and our planet. Bye-bye, Stephen and Ryan. Thanks for showing me that eating food from closer to home is miles better. Let's find out. To show you how bogs are made, Oliver and Noah need some bark from trees, sand, cotton wool, peat, and sphagnum moss. So what's the plan, guys? We're going to make bogs in bottles. One's going to be a raised bog and one's going to be a blanket bog. What's the difference between a blanket bog and a raised bog? Well, blanket bogs are usually formed in places where the ground is hilly and there's lots of rain. And raised bogs are usually formed on flatter ground in lakes. Let's make a blanket bog. First, they're putting in some sand. This is like the soil that the bog would have started forming on around 5,000 years ago. Now some peat, just like the peat that formed on the bog from squished together plants. That's enough, Noah. 
It's now it's time. your turn to do the bark. Next, some tree bark. This is like the wood from forests that grew on the bog around 4,000 years ago. Then more peat, like the peat that would have formed from the dead wood and other plants on the bog. Oh, making a bog sure is a lot of work. And finally, sphagnum moss, because that's one of the most common plants found growing on bogs. And finished. And finished. And now for the raised bog. The cotton wool is like the white clay that would have been at the bottom of a lake around 10,000 years ago. Now some peat, just like the peat that would have formed on top of the clay in a real raised bog. Then some tree bark, because thousands of years ago, forests would have grown on raised bogs as well. Next, more peat, made from all the dead trees and other plants in the bog. And finally, sphagnum moss. In a real bog, this sphagnum moss turns into peat by dying and getting squished together over hundreds of years. But luckily, we don't have to wait that long. Oh, you. <laughs> Look, there they are, two bogs in bottles. And now you know how bogs are made. Yeah, thanks Oliver and Noah. To show us how to check for drafts and keep them out, Maura and Kieran have a window. They brought their own window? <laughs> now that is impressive. Yes, and they're going to make a draft detector to test it for drafts. But Mark, what is a draft anyway? A draft is when colder air gets into the house from outside, usually through gaps that are too hard to see. First, they're using stones to weigh down two cardboard tubes so they don't topple over. Then Mora connects a skewer and they hang crepe paper from it. Ooh, so nice and colourful. Let's put the draft detector in front of the window. Crepe paper is very light, so even the tiniest breeze will make it move. And that's how it detects drafts. Time for Mora to do the hair dryer test. Look, the paper is moving. Is that a draft? Yep, even with the window closed, some air is still getting through. So they need to make a draft excluder. Ah. A draft excluder can block up the gaps causing the drafts. Mora and Kieran are making one out of old tights and socks. Right, time to put the draft excluder on the window. And now Mora can do the hairdryer test again. It's working, Mora. Kieran's right! It is working! The draft detector isn't even moving a tiny bit. That's right, Zoom. The draft excluder is blocking up the gaps and keeping the cold air out. High five. Oh, nice work, Mara and Kieran. What an excellent excluder. Let's find out. To show us why you should only put clean things in the recycling bin, Joe, Eve, and Mabel need some recycling and a conveyor belt. So, what are you going to do, guys? We're going to play a recycling game. Are you ready? Yeah! Eve is putting the recycling on the conveyor belt. Then it travels along the belt and drops into that tub at the end. It's going quite fast. Joe and Mabel are looking for dirty items. All good, all good. If they find any, they go into those buckets. They get a point for each dirty item they find. But if they miss one and it ends up in the tub, they lose a point. People do this for real as part of their job. Huh? Really? Where? In a place called a materials recovery facility. It's where our recycling goes after it's been collected from our house. The materials recovery facility has conveyor belts like Joe, Eve, and Mabel's, only much bigger with a lot more recycling. The 
the more dirty items, the harder the job of removing them. And the job would be a lot easier if we only put clean things into the recycling. I get it! <laughs> and the guy scored... Five points! Nice work! Thanks, guys. Your game is seriously good fun. Let's find out. OK, so Sarah and Paddy need... A straw, a ruler, a marker, scissors, a wooden dowel, some tape and some water. What's the plan, guys? We're going to make a sprinkler. OK, Paddy, let's get started. First, they're putting two marks on the straw to divide it up into three equal sections. I'm going to cut it. Next, Sarah is cutting halfway through the marks to make little holes for the water to come out. Oh, you have to be careful with scissors. That's right, Zoom. And Sarah is using special safety scissors. Now she's bending the straw at the cuts. Oh, hey, it's a triangle. They're using tape to stick their straw triangle to the wooden dowel. Okay. And that's Paddy and Sarah's sprinkler. Right, time to test it. The They're putting a bowl of water onto a large sheet of paper. Let's see if it works. Oh, be careful you don't get splashed. Sarah is using her hands to spin the sprinkler. Wow. It's spraying everywhere, all over the sheet. Oh, and look. The red paper makes the water easier to see. Hey, is that a field? Yes, Sue. Now Paddy is using the sprinkler to spray water on a model of a field. Wow. But how does their sprinkler work, Mark? When you put a straw in water, some of the water climbs up into the straw. And if you bend the straw into a triangular shape and spin it around, the water inside is pulled up even higher. And if you make little holes in the corners of the triangle, the water flies out through them. And sprinkles everywhere. And that's how a sprinkler makes rain. It sprays out the water by spinning really fast. <laughs> nice work, Sarah and Paddy. I really enjoyed that little spin. <laughs>